Greetings and welcome back everyone to From the Depths and to the Vehicle Designer once more. As you can see in your absence, I have been busy on shaping the midsection of our new fortress. It's a... Uh, Quite an upgrade, you may notice. I, I mean, I, I loaded in the Alpis for scale, and uh, what was meant to be a, a mid-step between it and, like, an end-game fortress. Well, all I can say is that if it continues to expand at this rate, then the end-game fortress is going to be, well... It may even be the same size as the planet at this rate. But this is the midsection. This is the uh, internals. This is where all the gutty watts lie. We've got our four engines. We've got a staggering amount of uh, flying fortress turbines. I was looking for the word there. Turbines is the word I was looking for. Now, there's probably no reason to have this many. In fact, if we have a look at one, let's just have a quick gander at how much power it requires. Power use multiplier, build more to improve, is 0 0.94. Power reserve, so power draw per frame is 6.7. So, I mean, you know, it's pulling a fair bit of power, but as you can see, our power has only gone down by about 4,000 of the uh, 10,600 that it, that it has available to it. Now, it's probably going to go down a fair old chunk more before we're finished, especially as we add on all of the uh, resource gatherers and, of course, shields. Now, for the time being, I'm not going to be adding the shields, and we're probably going to be adding a lot more turbines before then. Though, this is a quite a nice effect, I must confess. If I could get it so that the particles wouldn't move through the blocks, that would be glorious. It would look like something out of Independence Day. Just this gaping moor into the internals of the fortress, just clouded in, in some sort of weird-coloured atmosphere. Nevertheless... We have some repair capability. There's also repair bots tucked in there and there on each side. So the, the station can repair itself. And as this is built to be deployed in hostile waters, it can also share some repair to uh, its, its allies. Now, up here, you'll notice there are con some conspicuous hardpoint-looking depressions. And that is exactly what they are. But uh, I'm going for something a little bit... Well, I think it's quite interesting. I may put something there as well, probably just extra armor. But uh, I think we're going to have mine layers. Kind of more like grenade launchers, really, than anything else. They'll just be vertical column turrets with maybe six vertically arrayed mines. Very, very simple mines, but many, many ejectors, so that each mine can be uh, displaced quite far from the fortress, and we'll have them arrayed, capable of rotating along precision turrets at the top and the bottom. So in total, we'll have eight of these deployers, and in total, 48 mine launchers. I think that might make for a fairly interesting sort of mid-range defense system. It's more for things that get close than things at distance, but this is going to be designed to try and not let them get close. But I'm, I'm sort of thinking to the future and the possibility of an Avatar-class enemy vessel just kind of laughing off whatever long-range firepower this thing can put out. So we want to litter the ocean around it with a mind so that anything that gets close is going to have a bit of a bad day but uh, i will bring you back when i've added the mine layers on i think greetings and welcome back everyone to the hip enu with its new weapon systems which i have christened riot guns these are very simple little mine layers uh, practically the same as the porcupines honestly they in fact i've renamed the porcupines to the mark ii all i've done with it instead of having two explosive and one fragmentation i've got a proximity fuse and emp in a fragmentation and the fragmentations are set to 50 degrees because i'm not really sure which direction they're going to be coming from and i do want to kind of spread out the shrapnel but you'll notice that we've got four of them each one capable of five so in total we have down here five ten fifteen twenty add up there forty mines possible however i've actually done something i don't often do something that the last time i did it was in season two and i've gone to the effort and it took quite a while to set this up with firing solutions now, if we zoom all the way out and I increase the marker display, you'll notice that this weapon can only turn, although it's a 360 degree turret, it can only turn within this sphere, uh, rather this area. So we've got a, a long um, 75 degree 
uh, angle upwards and then arcing down to a minus 50 degree and the azimuth is 140 degrees to minus 50 degrees so that gives us a little bit of safety now each one of these ai's has a basic um safety here We've got an ai fail safe doesn't protect it at all i did test it i turned the all the guns to face this way and i fired and this one did in fact engage and blew up quite a large part of the ship actually um but thankfully i had had the forethought to save the design prior to trying to test that out and that is why you can hear the victory music of the uh, uh the vehicle designer kicking in because i just restarted the designer because honestly it would have taken me ages to repair it but now all of these guns point in the correct directions and will not fire in an area which is likely to hit each other let me demonstrate for you now this is uh, probably a little bit easier if I get between these two, so I'm controlling both. There we go. If you notice, the one where my cursor is can turn all the way around, but this one stopped there. It won't even fire. If I launch that one, this is the only one that's engaging. However, if I bring them both into the same area, notice both of them will engage. Now, if the AI decides to try and fire all of these weapons, the result will be this. You can rotate all the way through, which is fine, but it won't continue to rotate if it would force it to rotate beyond its normal angle although this was already firing so it couldn't stop firing once i rotated beyond its angle of fire it just simply stopped it it didn't try to rotate any further and that's an important thing to notice so there we are now the ai is set up on all of these in the same way and i've done the angles of fire on the bottom ones as well unfortunately they, although you can copy the settings to the clipboard and that helps with a little bit of copying the, the angles of fire between turrets you do need to change it quite a lot you need to either reverse the azimuth um or flip the angle so minus 50 minimum plus uh, 140 maximum becomes minus 140 plus 50 and you have to do that manually unfortunately now each weapon has a maximum range of 400 a minimum range of 70 i don't want to launch any mines closer than that because the mines themselves are going to be attracted to anything within 50 so i don't want it being attracted to our own fortress and a maximum altitude to engage of 75 now the reason why i've got a maximum altitude there is just so that if there's a plane nearby that's about to be dropped in the drink it'll still try to be firing on it even though the mines won't initially do any damage to it Perhaps my other weapons will bring it down, so I want a nice big pool of mines underneath where it's about to land. So I don't want to restrict it from firing on anything too high, but if it's much higher than 75 de uh, degree angle from the cannon itself, don't, don't even bother. Um, now, the weapons themselves can reach out to about 250 from the ejectors we've got two ejectors on each one the middle one has i believe two as well yeah i, I could have given it four but i gave, i left it at two now what that means is that when something is approaching they're going to start preparing the water you don't want to just only launch the mines once it's already that close you want to start launching the mines ahead of them the mines will stay in the water and this thing can keep firing these mines for a very very long time those mines are not an issue but i thought i'd bring you back just to have a look at the progress that's going on now i if you're wondering why i haven't painted it yet i don't intend to paint it yet um this is definitely going to be going up on the workshop as soon as i finish this it will be available on the workshop and a link will be put in the video description but uh, as a result i don't want to necessarily start painting it because i know other people might want to paint it differently once i put it in the campaign i will have painted it to my faction's colors and we'll see how that goes because i suspect i will not be just using the fleet trim and the fleet colors themselves as a result things may look very odd if you don't have these colors yourself for example i'll be using a very very dark black for certain of the blocks i'll probably be using a kind of lighter shade of this for certain ones so these won't change based on your fleet colors so given that i will more than likely just leave it unpainted and you can make a decision on the coloring yourself but that's all i had to report i will bring you back when there is more done and my lord it has taken a long time welcome back as you can see much has changed. When I last uh, recorded a, a glimpse, a snapshot of the vehicle's design, I think it was, went from this riot gun all the way to the top of the top set of riot guns. But we didn't have this section on the top, and we certainly didn't have the top section. I haven't uh, completed work on the bottom yet. There is still much to do. But uh, I thought I would bring you back to have a glance at how this this construct is going together this 
is easily the most expensive thing I have ever tried to build, much less thinking of building it in the campaign. I don't even think we've got the resources in the campaign to put this thing together. If we have a quick look, it is over 505,000 metal to, to make this. 83,000 crystal by itself, 166,000 scrap, 50,000 oil, and 113,000 um, natural resources. Now, to cover what I've done, we have missile warner system in here. In fact, the only way we're really going to be able to show you this is if I shrink everything down. And as you will see, this is the main engine room. You can think of this like a, a giant, um, a single giant engine. I mean, this is this is the generator down here, but this is the engine that is keeping this thing aloft. Um, we have little AIs just dotted around at the four corners. One controls both, just because if one takes damage, then it, it's got a secondary that it can continue spotting with, and that's present on the top and the bottom. We needed this. At the point where I was looking at building these sections above and below the riot guns, each one of these uh, turbines was at one point, I think it was 1.3 normal power. Each one was taking about 32 power per frame. Now, by adding all of these on the top and the bottom, we've reduced it below seven, which, you know, a massive change. But, wow. Now, over here, we can uh, bring that back up. This is not particularly well guarded. That's by design. I'm contemplating something, and I will get to that in a moment and describe it. But I'm contemplating something that has made me feel that I need to art artificially increase the vulnerability of this fortress for me to feel comfortable with what I'm planning. Well, it's not even a plan yet. It's just kind of this idea that won't, won't leave me alone. But uh, I've shaped this up a little bit. You'll notice that I am making use of light blocks and heavy blocks in ways that might not seem like it would make any, any difference. The reason why I do that is light blocks and, and heavy metal blocks paint differently. They, they take the color in a different way. And I'm kind of building this with a view to that. I'm, I'm trying to design this with a mind that someone might w enjoy being able to make use of that for their color scheme. So we have these uh, laser defense uh, platforms just out there, jutting out. And in here, very spiky. Now, this is, I think, part of the reason why I started considering what I'm considering. Initially, I was planning on tethering some large gun at the top. And that was what I was referring to when I, when I said it was going to be a bit of an experiment. Now, I wasn't entirely happy with the idea of tethering a vehicle because... I don't know, sometimes I feel it's cheesy, but what my plan was was the weapon would have no repair capability of its own. So the weapon wouldn't be able to repair the main body of the craft, although the main body of the craft would be able to repair the weapon. And that was the way that I was kind of justifying it to myself. And I felt that was a, a reasonable way of doing it. But as I started looking at this, I, I started to think, well, you know what, this is actually starting to look like, like a chess piece in a way. I mean, looking at the design, it's, it's definitely got a chess-like feel to it, and all the spikes at the top, I don't know, it's, it's kind of looking like one of the royal pieces, maybe the king, or actually maybe the queen. And then I started thinking of this as the head. Up until that point, I wasn't really thinking of it as a head. But once I started thinking of it as a head, I couldn't stop. And so, I've made a few adjustments for the potential that I might play with this idea of it being a head. And a head needs needs a face. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to build it in a face, at least not in a traditional sense, but um, I'm fairly certain I'm going to build an eye. Specifically one of them. I, I played around with the idea of, of building, like, cannons as the eye, but to get a cannon that is you know, in any way functional. You need enough length on the barrel that it would make making a face very difficult. But there is one type of weapon that generally I, I shy away from due to its power that I feel would actually work fairly well as an eye. <sighs> Damn me. What terrible sins did we commit to deserve such power? But here we are. In here, we've got uh, a slight adjustment so that I've got two laser transceivers, one pointing straight up. And as you can guess, that means I am considering making the face and the central sort of eye that it will have a laser. 
Now, I am actually thinking of trying to sculpt the face a little bit, but we'll, we'll have to see about that, because at this point, I've already all told with the previous episodes, including all of the cuts in the previous episode, and all of the time I've spent on this one, I've been working on this design for about five hours now. But yes, I'm thinking of having a head on here. Maybe moving around the spikes a little bit, creating much more of a, an interesting look. Now, part of the reason why this is, as a result, still so open, is I cannot in good conscience, make a heavily fortified weaponized laser. I can't. There's there's too much of me that says, no, this is, this is basically just creating a win button. There's no point in me playing anymore. So, intentional vulnerabilities. The neck is going to be the vulnerability. And that includes the spin block, which will later on be uh, part of the defensive structure of this fortress. I will, of course, have shields. I mean, I've got this powerful engine for that reason. But... I'm not going to go to any great lengths to fortify this area. I've tried to make it pretty as a result, because I was like, well, if I'm not going to be fortifying it, I may as well uh, make it look good. And so I think it actually does have, an, uh, have a nice aesthetic to it. Now, you'll notice these conspicuous corners here. Another weapon system is going to be going here. Now, this is going to be... I played around with the idea of a gun. I could hollow out some of the engine below to build a gun. But I actually favor the idea of a missile system, um, specifically designed to take on flyers. It will be a very fast firing, um, or rather the missiles will be extremely fast using the variable speed thrusters. And I'm thinking of going with the Thumper Warheads. So they will be kinetic kill devices, to use a term that uh, Entrelysium is uh, often saying. They should be very dangerous to flyers. If they can clip a fly, they are going to impart incredible amounts of, of destructive force to to its its body. So hopefully that will work. I am going to probably work on the, those defenses now. The bottom of the fort is still going to be torpedoes, as it always has been planned to be. And I will likely go with the tether idea down here. So we'll be having a tether system where I'll have a sub-vehicle spawner and a docking clamp to hold the weapon system down here with kind of an array of repair tentacles around to try and keep the, the system repaired. I'll have to see how I feel about it because on the surface it does seem cheesy to me, but I think it'll be interesting just from an experimental point of view to see if I can get that system working. So when you come back, I'm going to have built the missile uh, anti-air missile system I'm probably also going to have made a start on building the resource gatherers down here. We now have an AI, which is why the fortress is bang smack in the middle of this area. And little by little, bit by bit, this incredibly expensive fortress is coming together. Greetings and welcome back everyone to lag. So much lag. As you can see, I have added in the resource gathering limbs and added in the uh, shield limbs. Now, once I was done adding those in, it really did occur to me that how much this fortress represents. It is hugely expensive. And I don't mean expensive in the sense of metal or any of the resources in game. This is a very expensive construction computationally now what i'm thinking of doing also i noticed that i've uh, made a slight mistake that one's a little bit too close but uh what i'm thinking of doing here is probably getting rid of the uh four-way connector down there that i have right in the middle this is well, I mean, it's unnecessary, really. It's an unnecessary uh, weakness to the design. But I feel that these limbs represent an awful lot of blocks, and it's only really begun lagging significantly since adding them in. Now, this could also be because of these laser beams. That is certainly a possibility. But what I'm thinking of doing is doing away with the main spin block here, the uh, four-limbed spin block, and then pulling these three faster rotating limbs in close and they will take on the duties of the resource gatherer but aside from that i have also made some missile systems now to have a quick look at these weapons we have the meteor hammer thumper head laser beam rider six fuel tanks 
a variable thruster set to 7,000. Um, the normal is, or rather nominal, is 1,000 thrusts per second. So this is seven times higher. Not quite as high as it could be. And fins. Now, realistically, um, I tested this in terms of launching the missile and seeing how far out we could get. About 1,000. So we're going to leave it around that kind of area. But... They get there very, very fast. I have no idea how much damage the Thumper is going to do in actual combat. We're going to have to find out whether this weapon system is capable of actually doing much damage or not, or whether it's just a waste. But as you can see, the other thing we've done is we've added an awful lot of shields. There are shields everywhere. And this was part of the, the design uh, for this fortress. Uh, that's why we've got such a powerful engine, was to accommodate having shields everywhere. Um, though that shield is not there or is not turned on. I'm going to have to have a look into that one. We seem to be a shield or two down, and that is not good. There needs to be a shield in the middle. Ah, that's the shield that I'm missing. Okay, I'll need to... Uh, oh, no, there we are. I was just at a poor angle to see it. There we go. Okay, everything is all right. No need to panic, anyone. Everything is fine. But I am going to go ahead and strip these down move those much more shielded, much more heavily armoured uh, limbs closer to the centre. I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of this or not. I mean, I know it's a weakness, but it's so aesthetically pleasing. I really like the look of that. I could just leave this with a warning that uh, if someone uses this design off the workshop, that uh, they mo may want to fill in that, that gap there. If, if the aesthetics aren't their thing, and they, they just want efficiency, then they could go for that. Though, uh, realistically, this is not an efficient build, considering how much it costs. And to give you a quick update, this is how much it costs. We're almost, very almost, 3 million RP for this station. Now, obviously, we are looking at building a laser system here. So, uh, I think when you come back next, I will have gone ahead and I will have moved these limbs in, gotten rid of the uh, four-point spin block, and may have completed work on our laser weapon system. Then all that will remain are some weapon systems down here, namely the torpedo, tethered torpedo system. So, hope you're enjoying the build so far, but I will be back in a few minutes. And welcome back. As you can see, I have been busy and I have built my laser weapon. I'll actually show you that last. Firstly, I pulled in the armored limbs. I attached a bunch of resource gatherers to that. We have lost overall resource gathering capacity, but not by much. I've also added a little bit of a lip inside here. It may be hard to see while they're spinning, just to add a little bit of extra protection there. Next up. I built the laser system. Now from the back, doesn't look like too much. It was meant to kind of look like a hood, like a cowl or something, and, and then the laser, and then a little little observation room. This is the actual command room for this uh, fortress. Some blue lighting. Don't ask me why it ended up looking like a gath. I really don't know, but it did. So we're just gonna have to live with that. Perhaps it was my inner AI program at work. But I have intentionally limited the power of this weapon system. Let me give you a quick rundown. If we pull this down, you'll notice that firstly, there are only four steering optics on this. Six will give you the widest range of firing um, for the laser without it moving. So a static laser with six optics will have the widest kind of azimuth and elevation um, options when it, when it comes to uh, the angle of its attack. And then I've got only, I believe, two accuracy. Two, uh, let me just have a look at those, laser optics. Now, the result of this is that its range is a little bit lower and the accuracy is significantly lower. And that is by design. I don't want to make a powerful laser system. Again, I feel that they're remarkably OP in the game as is, but I just couldn't resist the desire to make to make a face on top of this that had a laser on top. I So I've done my best to keep this uh, low power, though I have turned off the continuous wave laser because obviously if I'm going to have a laser system on you, I want to actually be able to use it. And the continuous laser only doing 50 odd damage at a thousand range, 
wasn't good enough. So I've put four Q switches on. So let me give you a quick demonstration of how this works. Let's uh, pick a target just over yonder and start firing. As you can see, at range, the accuracy is, well, there isn't any accuracy, basically. It is pretty bad. Down there, close up, still actually pretty bad. So, I really do feel that uh, I've effectively dropped the DPS with this laser system, and so I feel a little bit better about using it. Now, of course, if you were to use this, you could always uh, change the face. You could put whatever you wanted up there, honestly. Um, but you could increase the accuracy of the laser system significantly. Now, down here is where we're going to be working on our torpedo system. It'll be similar to the Mandrake's torpedo system, I suspect. But that is the last thing that I need to work on, so I'm gonna go ahead and get on with that, and I shall bring you back, hopefully, to a finished outpost. And welcome back. I have completed the tethering system. Now, just to uh, make this well known, I have not tried to deal with tethering systems at all before and I've only briefly had a look at the sub vehicle spawner so this could well be set up incorrectly and if so then I would deeply appreciate any feedback in the comments to uh, help me work out how I meant to do this now I've got a sub vehicle spawner in here it's currently got the hip and torp taken by it it will hold it out at 25 distance this is the um, vehicle itself at an elevation of minus 90 so it's the right way up and then down here we so basically from what I understand that will actually make it so that when this goes out of play the torpedo will come with it and when it comes back into play the torpedo will come back into play with it now here I've got a tractor beam currently holding on to this and again this one's a little bit closer because obviously it's a uh, the sub vehicle spawner is much higher up anyway. And again, elevation minus 90. Most of this isn't going to matter for the actual torpedo system. Really, have I got to do this every single time? There we go. Now, this is the torpedo system. It's got lead blocks on the bottom to try and keep it level. It's not level, and I'm not sure how I can make it level. I've added um, the jet stabilizer to the side. That hasn't helped. But the torpedo system itself, not bad honestly i've got uh, five different torpedoes uh two pairs of the same and then one really long one here's what they look like fins at the back to decrease the uh drag that's going to be affecting everything and then slowly looking down through this we have two fins four torpedo propellers one fuel tank a uh, prediction navigation guidance camera for infrared two fragmentation war uh, sorry three fragmentation warheads and two EMP warheads and of course a ballast tank as well then this pair two EMP warheads ballast tank infrared seeker camera basically a little bit slower and then finally this one as well EMP warhead there actually this one should have had Yes, this one shouldn't be that. This one should have at least one fragmentation warhead, I thought. Let me just correct that there. So, assign there, and all done. Let me make sure I'm building on this, and that way I can save this vehicle. So, there we go. It has changed, you liar. But there we are. So, that's the torpedo system, and it is currently tethered. Now, the, from what I understand about tethering... The idea is that the mothership is going to spawn it in. It's just going to hold it there. This is never going to move anywhere. It's a completely separate system. But it's a separate AI and a separate vehicle for all intents and purposes. So enemies might be distracted by it. Of course, I've got a ridiculous amount of repair tentacles here. So the fort will probably be able to out-repair most damage coming into this thing. I'm using an orange in block to help me position it specifically. I also use supply pumps. There are a bunch of ammo barrels inside, but the fortress up here will also share its ammo down to it. I'm... I'll be honest with you, I'm not entirely certain that this is going to work, or it will be worth the effort of setting all of this up. Maybe I should just have something else down here instead. But for the time being, 
we're going to see how this works once we get to the campaign, see if it actually plays any meaningful role. If it does not, then I'll probably have a look at building an actual mounted torpedo turret on the bottom here. But uh, I do want to see how tethering works. Again, some people use tethering to create uh, dedicated healers in their vessels. Sometimes, literally, the tethered object is internal to the vessel, like a massive chamber in the hull. And you'll have a tethered, uh, just a basic ball of repair tentacles, because that will m far exceed the, the DPS of most things. The amount that that, that ball of repair tentacles is going to be able to repair, assuming there's enough resources, is going to outstrip most damage coming its way. I feel that's a little bit cheesy. So I wouldn't have a repair bot, like a, a custom-built repair vehicle, healing the main ship. But having the mothership healing a weapon system, I don't mind that as much. It's probably still a little bit cheesy, if I'm perfectly honest with you. Now, the very last thing that we want to do, before we sign off on this design, it has been hours of work. The shaping on this, and you might not think that the shaping would take that long. The The main part is working out how I want something to look, rather than actually getting it to look that way. That is probably the biggest part of any design process, is just deciding what I want. Though, sometimes. The, uh, the head section actually took me far longer than I'd like to admit. Trying to get that to look right, that was, that was actually remarkably difficult. And there we go. So we now have the capacity to get ourselves some fuel as well. I'm not going to go overboard with that. Fuel tends to not be the uh, thing that's holding me back. But there we are. Hip Enu 25. Now, obviously, I would like to put this up on the workshop ASAP. But we can't put it up on the workshop until we have a name. So, in the comments to this video... I would be very grateful if you could come up with some suggestions for names. Again, mythological creatures, always good. I could already tell that some people are going to suggest the Cyclops. And if that is the best suggestion, then that's what we'll go with. But uh, if this springs to my... If this conjures any specific mythological images to mind, then do consider leaving a comment suggesting. And uh, if I do select your comment, then the second instance of this because obviously the first time I spawn it in I will be naming it after its class name so for example if this was named the Cyclops and the first instance of this outpost would be the Cyclops outpost but then the second instance will be will, will take on the name of uh, the person who christened it but that's going to be it from me for now this has taken a phenomenal amount of time to do but Honestly, I'm actually really, really pleased with it. I'm a little bit concerned about the uh, lag that happens when this is in uh, in the scene. That's a little bit nasty. I may even consider building a stripped-down version of this at some point. But for now, I'm actually really happy. And I'm happy with a couple of the, the basic things that I've done. Like these, the riot guns. I really like these. I... It seems silly, but I just love the aesthetic that I've got going there. These little rotating turrets that just launch out grenades at stuff. I like the uh, missile defense system. That th this little port for the for the laser beam to travel down. I like that as well. I like a lot of things about this. A lot of things, and I'm really really pleased that I took the time to build it. But that is going to be the last of this episode, I'm afraid. So, if you have any name suggestions or any feedback in general, then please consider leaving a comment on the video below. But until next time, and as always, do take care.